Hi, everybody. So let's start this new Jenkins infrastructure meeting. Um, yeah, considering the fact that we had the contributor summit last week, we've been quite, I mean, we have quite a lot of topic to talk today. So the first one is we make progress with Algolia. So the plan is to use Algolia to improve research results, both on plugin site, plugins at Jenkins.io, and the documentation, www.jenkins.io. So first, um, on the plugin side, so it's now enabled. So let me just show you this one. So now when we go to the plugins at Jenkins.io website, we have, I mean, you can see the search by Algolia. And so basically what it does, it just um, return more results. So for instance, if you type just GI, um, it will show you um, Git plugins, for instance. So it just, I mean, it's more, I mean, it's more powerful than what we had before. And also something that we are looking to, to process, we also have some analytics right now in the Algolia search, uh, the console, sorry. And so we, one of one of the topics that we want to analyze is what are the kind of information people are searching for? So either because it's not correctly documented or maybe there is a missing plugin or whatever so um yeah we we will we have more analytics information now and we have we have to see what we can do with those right now um the next the next step is to 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 use i go uh, so, yes right mark so on that uh, i was impressed that if you look at this one already on this page, we see one hint. Notice number four in the search without results. They searched for the words Git and plugin and got no result. And so it's like, oops, that's a bad sign because that should have should have had hits. And so so already we're seeing hints in this. Oh, there are things we need to tune and improve. Definitely. Yeah, that and that's that's quite a surprise, right? Oops, why would that? I mean, the word plugin suddenly made it less useful. Yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, it's, it sounds a bit redundant, but that's interesting because we know how people are searching information on the website. On the right. Website. So, so that those those analytics are surprisingly useful, even as little as we have right now. Um, yeah, we still have to to list or at least to understand how the analytics that we have by default, um, in case we have to turn off some of them. Um, but yeah, right now we are we are really still at the beginning. Um, so I was in contact with Algolia employees and they were really happy to sponsor us. Um, they are using Jenkins internally and they are really happy with that. So that was a really good conversation we had last week. Um, so yeah, we should add Algolia to the sponsoring page as well. The plan is to continue working with the documentation. So next step is www.jenkins.io. It appears that they have a specific offers for documentation. Um, I think it's doc search. Um, so it's slightly different, but yeah, first that's that's on the roadmap. Um, I'm not sure if Mark or RK or Kevin will look at it. Um, so it's it's actually Gavin that will do the look. He's at least that's what he said. And they've already given us the doc search enablement instructions. And and so Gavin, who knows JavaScript well, is a great candidate to do that. Awesome. Any question before we move to the next topic? No. Awesome. Um, so the next topic is about pager duty. So I had a few people to the pager duty um, system. So I had Garrett, Damien, and Mark Wade. So if you just look at it, so right now we have um, four different um, slots, uh, time slots. Basically, the layer one and layer two are most more European time zones, while layer three and fours are um, US time zones. So basically, uh, it, it cover morning, morning in a part of the afternoon, and then afternoon and the and the evening. Basically, um, what I did for the European because that was quite easy. Um, I did this given. Um, Oops, cancel. So um, I added, so we already had Daniel in the had Daniel and Arnaud in the loop, and I had a Damien and Garrett. Um, so basically you'll be on call once a week. Um that's the default behavior. 
And then the next, the next thing is, if you get notified and you don't respond, then I'll be notified um, at the end of the day. So anyway, we have the same for the US time zone, but we don't have a lot of people there right now for the layer four. Um, it's Kozuke, which does not respond anymore. Tyler from time to time, depending on the gravity, the depending are important is a notification. Same for Andrew, and I just added Mark Wait to the loop. Um, we try to catch. Um, I would, so for for us, we try to catch at least the most important um, issues. Let's say when uh, the website is down. Um, if when we are on call, the idea is to work on the system during our day-to-day -day working hours. Um, so typically, if something goes wrong in the middle of the night for me, I usually, usually try to find someone on, in the US to, to, to deal with the issue. Otherwise, we just delay until um, we have the time to work um, on the issues. Most of the time, the kind of issues is either we don't have enough disk space, then we have to clean up the system, or for some reason, an SSL certificate did not renew correctly. And so we had some manual fixes to do, um, basically. Any question? So I need a tutorial on how to be effective using PagerDuty. Others may not need it, but for me, I've, I've not been terribly helpful with it, I think. So is that something we should schedule separately as another time where you tutor? Uh, I, think, I think we can just quickly do it now because it's quite simple. So PagerDuty, the only thing it does is it receives a notification from Datadog and then forward that to you. The way you get the notification depends on how you want to be notified. So when you go to your profile, you can provide an email address, you can provide a phone number, an SMS, or you can install the Pager DT application on your phone. Um, I used to provide my phone number, but I stopped doing that because um, otherwise, I mean, I find quite I find that quite intrusive. But I receive SMS um, when something goes wrong, and more importantly, I have the Pager DT app installed on my phone. So if something goes wrong um, and I'm not available, I can just acknowledge um, that the issue is there. And I'll, I'll, and I'll work on it um, when I have some time, let's say the day after or in two days, something like that. That's, that's the one I prefer. Um, but yeah, that's, that's really up to you. It depends it depend basically what contact information you provide in your profile. So okay. yeah, Pager, Pager it is really simple to use. Okay, so the, the simple step is I go to jenkins.pagerduty.com, log in as myself, configure my profile, and that should already be enough if I do yes. that. Oh, and install the PagerDuty app on my phone. Okay, yes. got it. So that basically the, the thing. The next step is when you get notified about something, we have a specific Git repository named Jenkins Infra slash runbooks, um, where typically we document the kind of things that we do when, I mean, depending on the situation. And so the, 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 the process now is to first look at if the documentation there is still relevant. Um, and if not, either open a Jira ticket so we can try the, that we miss some documentation or write it or do whatever. But the idea is ideally someone on call should be able to solve the issue with the, the correct documentation. Um, right now, the challenge that we have is we have two kind of infrastructure. We have virtual machine with some people comfortable with those machine. Some people have access to those machine. And then we also have the whole communities environment with different kind of, I mean, different people are comfortable with that environment as well. Um, so that's the biggest challenge. Um, but otherwise, most of the things are documented in this kit repository. Thank you. Um, last, last, last mention on pager duty. Um, last, um, yeah, I, I was. That's also the, the next up, the next point. Um, over the, the 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 over the weekend, we we got a lot of not notification on pager duty. So basically, what I did is I enabled more monitoring on Friday afternoon, which is not something that that should have done. Um, and it just spammed people uh, over the weekend. Um, I was only on cold Sunday, so I only discovered that Sunday. And then I log in on Jenkins Infra, discovered that Daniel was complaining about the amount of the amount of uh, notification from PagerDuty. 
but um, yeah, that topic that was my fault, um, which I will explain in the next topic. Um, any question before I continue? So um, uh, from Datadog point of view, so basically what I did is something that I wanted for a while was to monitor third the third mirrors. Um, I, wa I wanted to be able to detect when, let's say, serverion or whatever the mirror is down or slow, whatever the issue may happen. Um, typically, the, the, the reason for that is when we have people complaining about GitHub Jenkins.io because they cannot install a plugin. Even if the Jenkins services are running fine, uh, sometimes the, the root cause is just the mirrors. So I just enabled basic HTTP monitoring for those services. And it ended up that those services were not reliable over the weekend. So some were really slow. Um, and so the, the challenge that we had here was we received notification, I acknowledged the, the notification, then the problem was gone because the, the mirror went back to the normal state. And then 15 minutes after that, the issue reappeared. So it was a different alert, a different notification. And so, yeah, we just got spam over the weekend. Um, so I disabled, I disabled pager duty alerting for those mirrors because the final goal is not to be um, I mean, we cannot do anything with those mirrors. The only thing that we want to know is if something is wrong is happening. So we can maybe contact the mirror maintainer, whatever, but we don't, I mean, it doesn't, we don't have to do that in the middle of the night. So that's basically the rule. Um, but yeah, if, if, yeah, if for Garrett and Damien, if it become an issue for you to stay on page RTT, because ideally it should not be a problem. Um, then instead of just ignoring alerts, just tell me or let first work on reducing the number of alerts instead of just ignoring the issues. Next topic, um, Damien. Uh, so Joseph, Joseph um, pr uh, proposed a PR to switch to traffic for the ingress. So traffic is a different web server. Um, with more feature compared to Nginx right now. And so this is something that I wanted to test in production for a while. Um, Joseph uh, started working on that. Damien finalized the PR. So we, we now have both uh, do those both ingress in place, one for the private network, one for the public network. Um, we still have to plan uh, to switch services to those ingress controller. Uh, we'll start with the private one um, and if everything goes if everything is fine, we'll do the same for the public um, one. Um, the only one, the only, no, sorry, we can, the, when, once we decide to switch the traffic from Nginx to traffic, um, nobody will notice that because we have many stateless application on the communities cluster at the moment. Our, yeah, I think it's fine, but yeah. The this is migration can be quite easy for per application. Yeah. It's only a matter to redirect the DNS record of a given application to the new IP because we have created both uh, couples of ingress that are using uh, different and separated IPs, either the private IPs through the VPN and, and same for the public ones. So. Uh, the idea is that we can do um, a, B, uh, a, B testing or A, B deployment here. So the risk is, uh, is quite low in the sense that if we see something goes wrong when migrating a given service, we can always roll it back to Nginx. Nginx won't go away until we have moved everything and we are, we are sure that traffic fulfill all the needs. So starting with a private is a good exercise because if we break things, it will break only, only for us. Um, yeah, and yeah, Joseph did a really good work on that part. He did all the heavy lifting. My involvement was only the last, the last turn of the screw at the end. So, and it looks to, to work pretty well. And, and so the, the compelling, the compelling win there is that we get, um, um, additional capabilities from traffic as an English control, as an English controller that we didn't have from Nginx. And so this transition will, will give us additional flexibility in the future. Um, in terms of feature, the, the, let's say the feature we're doing with Nginx alone are um, almost the same, but 
with Nginx, we had to add more components. One of the things I have in mind is, for instance, the certificate management with cert manager for the ingress specific part, um, which is less EV. It's less code to maintain. So the feature set is the same. There is no new feature. It will just ease to have less code and less configuration to manage for the same feature set. Okay. And, and, and also a traffic provide feature that we needed in the past um, that we don't need for now, but we may need that again in the future, like odd proxy and stuff like that. So um, it's not like we need it right now. It's just like in terms of feature, it provide more feature. Um, and so I prefer to have it um, enough in advance when, when we have the time to, to work on that than um, when we really need something particular because and, yeah uh, yeah another point here is that traffic support dynamic configuration not only from kubernetes but we could add different backend provider on the same instance so the ingress will do an ingress but multi-system so you could imagine having different docker um, uh, instances like you have a virtual machine with docker but which is on a private network it will be easy to auto configure this. So you can still do this with Kubernetes, but you have to manage the configuration by yourself. So in the context of diversifying our sponsorships, the different platform where we would want to run different services, that could be also a great help because we will be able to have the same entry point for everyone and then distribute on the backends on different cloud systems. Thank you. Thanks for the clarity. Next topic that I that I put here was um, Damien is fine tuning uh, the Jenkins master, so basically infra.ci and soon release.ci. So we are affected by a weird issue with the LDAP um, connection. So basically, from time to time, um, the LDAP connection times out. Um, timeout. Um, Damien has been looking at that. He did not find anything interesting. So what he did, he installed the advisory plugin um, to collect some information to improve the, the to fine tune um, the Jenkins instance. Um, right now, yeah, right now this this was on on the memory um, settings. Oleg made a good suggestion that maybe four gigabyte was not enough for infra. I think for now it is because at least we are using um, Grafana to monitor some, I mean, to collect some metrics and nothing tell us that we don't have enough memory or CPU at the moment. Um, this is something that may change in the future, but at least for the moment, um, yeah. That's fine, but the idea is to have one change at a time. Regarding the ADAP, if we continue to have the ADAP issue, we may switch to a different SSO or whatever. Sorry. Yes, the, the tuning that have been applied are only keeping the same resource usage as defined today. It's just optimization based on the current state. In order to change the state, e.g. Um, adding or removing CPUs or memory to the Jenkins instance, uh, fine uh, analyzing the LDAP issues that are tightly related to the garbage collection inside the GVM. The goal is to have precise metrics. And all the information source on that says that we need fine grained information and metrics. And so we will have to add them. Most of the time it comes from the cloud based knowledge or Jenkins 6 knowledge. Um, but that will be the next steps because almost everyone that I ask for help told me you need to measure, which makes sense. So the goal is to, okay, let's optimize what we have right now and see if we have a change. And then before going in dichotomy analysis, we could just measure precisely what we need and want to check. And then we will iterate based on that. The, 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 conc the, the, the information which is really important here is that Given the split state of Jenkins between GDK 8 and 11, the M chart we provide is try to be agnostic, but most of the GVM option that we are using should be a good default and sane default for any Jenkins instance most of the time. And this will be a topic in the future as a feature for the Helm chart by providing the set of GVM flags that are known to be a good rule of thumb uh, to start I Jenkins with. 
I think something basically that should go back to the ham chart is to by default use the GDK 11 uh, version because on the ham chart with by default real running containers, so it makes sense to use um, Java 11 instead of by default deploying Java 8. But this is a, some a, a topic specific to um, to the upstream ham chart. But I think it would make sense to by default use the Java 11 on the default ham chart and have specific uh, default parameters. Yeah, any question regarding this topic? OK, yeah, so thing, uh, to keep in mind that uh, um, uh, there is a recent report about um, uh, memory leak on Java 11. OK, so if you observe uh, the same uh, on uh, InfraCI or on other instances, uh, it's uh, in Jira because it might be a real issue. Okay, good to know. So it's related to pipeline CPS plugin. It's related to which plugin? Pipeline CPS or workflow CPS. Um. So, sorry, sorry about that. Um, I have quite a lot of activity inside and sorry. Um, so the last topic um, is about the Jenkins inbound agents. So several weeks ago, we got issues where, um, so basically we are using specific inbound agent on CI, the Jenkins.io, which by default um, are using the default user by the upstream image, so most of the time root. And so Damien, Damien and Kara work on those image to by default use the Jenkins agent. So the idea is to not be using the root user by default. Um, there was some discussions about should we maintain those image on Jenkins CI or Jenkins infra. Um, the first step is because the need is for the Jenkins infra project, um, we first build and publish those images um, on the Jenkins Info organization on Docker Hub. Um, we did not have the time to update ci.jenkins.io yet because of the contributor summit last week. And um, But at least those images are now published on Docker Hub. Um, so yeah, the, in the coming days, we'll have to update ci.jenkins.io. This configuration is done manually. Um, for now, we still have to work on Seattle Jenkins, but yeah. But um, I put, I mean, I put some link to the Docker Hub and the Git repository. The next step is um, to see how we can publish tags for Jenkins CI as well, so the community can use that. But what we want, what we fear here is that we just create a new set of images that the community expect us to maintain. Um, the problem is it just introduced a lot of new Docker images and we would like to first identify maintainers for some of those images. So this is something that we already explained, that Damien already explained multiple times in the previous weeks. Um, but yeah, so we won't go back to that explanation now. But what we have to hear is, what you have to, to, to understand is those emerges can be used, can be tested. Um, I put the link on Docker Hub. Um, and yeah, from an injectance infra, that, that thing is all, almost solved. Any question? Then, oh, I, I, I see I Jenkins that I owe. There was one additional topic. I think you had mentioned EC2 plugin upgrade. Is that a, a likely coming soon, or should we should we plot and plan for that? Uh, I think if we just either it needs you or me to take thirty minutes to update the plugin and to test that everything goes correctly. Oh, so you are it's, it's, such an optimist. I love working with optimists. I, I was so but, terrified of that plugin in the past. Okay, all right. Yeah, but, but basically we do. We, we, 
that's why I say we need 30 meters or one hour. So um, we, we fix downstream issues. And worst case scenario, we still have the Azure plugin in place. So we could still switch to the Azure, Azure virtual machines temporarily the time that we fix the EC2 plugin. Okay, so so if I if in my nervousness I just schedule some time with you and the two of us pair on that, that's probably the healthiest thing to do. Great, yeah. I'll I'll do that. Uh, the, the 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 thing is, we are quite a lot of version in the past. I think we are mm -hmm. using a one year old version. Um, a lot of things happen. The one that I'm the most excited um, personally is. Um, in the past, you had to specify the MI that you wanted to use. Um, now you can specify a pattern. Uh, so let's say you want to always have the same image based on that specific tag, which means that you don't have to build, um, you don't have to modify the Jenkins configuration each time that a new MI is available. Um, it's just a lot easier. Um, this is the way it works with the Azure plugin. And I find it more convenient to use, but yeah. This thing was introduced several months ago. So when you have some time, let's just bump the version and see see what happened. Thanks. I got just two information. I've started discussion for sponsorship with two uh, French provider, cloud provider. I already have an answer from the first one, which is Scaleway. Um, they they mostly do bare metal, but they also have a manage Kubernetes service, which is CNCF compliant and object storage. So they are open to start the discussion. Um, so it could be interested to check. I was thinking initially and naively on the Kubernetes managed service if, because it could add additional capacity to whatever gen, for the future of CI Jenkins outside the KS. It could be a great way to have a fallback because we can add multiple Kubernetes and we can reuse the same pod the template on all of these uh, Kubernetes. And yeah, the object storage and bare metal machines might be more interested if you want to set up mirrors. So if you have other ideas based on the service they provide, don't hesitate. And the other provider is less well-known. It's named OutScales in a single world. They're a filial of Dassault. And they provide an EC2 compliant uh, public cloud and private cloud. Um, hmm. They are differentiated in uh, uh, security. They host most of the state-wise uh, cloud because of their security concern. They are EV users of Jenkins open source. So I'm trying to get them to, to give a, a testify at least on the Jenkins is the way. And they will be, they will, it looks like they are interested if they could provide a EC2 service with a few credits. And so the EC2 latest plugin is able also to handle their own API, which they use internally. So that could be also be interested. I've started the discussion on both. I don't know the amount, but yeah, diversifying sponsorship is always good. Yeah, that would be awesome. And I think it could also reduce, I mean, yeah, to spread the C, the, um, our CI instances. So if we could reduce the cost of CI, the Jenkins IO, that would be really awesome. Thanks, Simon, for driving that. Any last topic? No, then I propose to stop here. Thanks, everybody. See you. Bye bye.